What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about the top 10 most influential figures in Norwegian history. I'm actually very excited for this because, to be perfectly honest, in American education, we barely learn anything about Norway at all, ever. We Barely anything about where it's located on the map, what is in Norway. 99% of what I've learned about Norway has been on YouTube, and I'm, I'm very serious about that. And certainly nothing about Norway's influential, important, famous figures, like in history. So I'm happy to like fix that today, to actually learn about it and, and correct where the American education system has failed me. So I have this article here, Top 10 Most Influential and Famous Figures in Norwegian History. Uh, we'll take a look at the most prominent Norwegians throughout history and how they claimed their spot in the history books. And this can be with achievements, exploration, music, writing, politics, I'm sure. Obviously, there's thousands and countless Norwegians who have accomplished amazing things, but this is the top 10, or at least the top 10 according to this article, which should be a good place to start, huh? Good place. So number one, Edvard Grieg. Edvard Grieg? Edvard Grieg is Norway's most famous composer and pianist, regarded as one of the most prominent composers of the Romantic era. A pianist. Let me look up uh, what he looks like. Okay. Oh, he looks kind of like Albert Einstein, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, he looks like a composer, Norwegian composer. Okay, um, born in 1807. By 15, his talent was recognized by Norwegian violinist Old Bull, where he was sent to study music. He was already amazing at age 15. Despite health challenges, had a successful career. Graduated. Okay. His interpretation of Norwegian folk music in his com compositions brought the music of Norway to international conscientiousness. So he was so good, such a good Norwegian composer. He almost helped bring Norway, like, to the global stage in terms of music. Like, made, made Norway, like, a force to be reckoned with for music. That's important. That's substantial. I have not heard of him. Um, it helped develop a national identity when Norway was gaining its independence. Wow. Okay. Some of his most famous works include In the Hall of the Mountain King and Morning Mood. Huh. I almost feel like I've heard of that, In the Hall of the Mountain King. That sounds very epic. Okay. That's good. That's the first one. Number two, Henrik Ibsen. Henrik Ibsen. Okay. Familiar name for most people. Ah, I don't, I don't recognize it. I don't. Meh. Interested in playwrights and theater. Okay, he's a, he's a playwright. He is considered one of the founders of modernism in theater and one of the most influential playwrights in his time. Henrik Ibsen. Let me look up what he looks like. Oh, wow. What a beard, by the way. <laughs> Man, I love how people used to look hundreds of years ago. <laughs> Honestly, some good fashion. Wow, okay. Um, I guess I'm not very good at knowing playwrights and stuff like that, so maybe that's why I've never heard of him. Ibsen was born in Skien. After being an apprenticed pharmacist, he moved to Oslo to pursue a career in playwriting. Uh, despite several attempts, he was not allowed to enroll but wow, he did not get into college, but he still became one of the best of all time. Despite writing, despite writing several plays while working as a theater director, they received little acclaim. It was not until he wrote Brand in 1865 that he got critical acclaim. So he just kept writing, uh, even though it wasn't his job. And he eventually just wrote this masterpiece called Brand. Um, this was followed by several influential plays, considered his best work over 30 years. Pierre Gint, Hedda Gabler, Doll's House, and The Wild Duck. Wow! Okay, cool. So we have a pianist, a composer, and now we have a playwright. 
Henrik Ibsen. Okay, very good. Number three, Ol Gunnar Skorskjar. I'm probably not saying that right. Is perhaps the most famous Norwegian footballer. Oh, he plays football. After the enjoying success in the Norwegian league, he was signed by Manchester United in 1996. This is recent. This is like almost modern. This was 1996. Let me look him up. Let me see what he looks like. Oh, mm, I don't see. I don't know anything about football. I don't follow football or anything like that. So I'm sure this this Norwegian is very famous. And I bet you most football fans know him. It's just me. It's just me who doesn't know. Ol Gunnar Soskjar. He made a name for himself as a deadly striker. So he's like the best Norwegian football player. And he basically got signed by Manchester United. He was so good. He got out of the Norwegian league. Very impressive. Very impressive. Even me who doesn't follow football. That's impressive. Um, he was nicknamed the baby-faced assassin. Okay. Uh, in 1999, Champions League, he scored the game winner in overtime against the German team, Bayer Munich. Okay, cool. Uh, very nice. Very nice. So a sp I'm, I'm happy we have a good diversity of people in this list. We have a football player, playwright, composer, and next we have Leif Erikson. Okay, I've heard of Leif Erikson. This is the first influential famous Norwegian I've heard of. I believe Leif Erikson was an explorer, and he actually was mentioned in school. This is like the one that I know of. Founded the first Viking settlement in Greenland. He was the son of Viking King Eric the Red. Wow. Leif Erikson. Okay, obviously there's no actual picture of him. Leif Erikson. Viking. Oh my gosh. Um, perhaps he is no thought to be the first European to reach Vinland. What we call North America. Yes, that's it. That is why I know him. As the first European to reach North America. That is why I know Leif Erikson. Okay. Okay, cool. After one winter, he returned to Greenland. <laughs> he met with the Red Indians, according to the saga. All right, cool. This is like probably one of the more famous Norwegians I know of. Morten Harket. Aha. Morten Harket. Aha. Oh, he's in the band. Ha, aha. Oh, I know Aha. Yeah, he's great. He has a beautiful voice. Aha, take on me. Right, the Norwegian band. Okay, I'm surprised. I actually know some of this stuff. Uh, he's the frontman of Aha since 1982. Rose to prominence with the album Hunting High and Low. With singles Take On Me and The Sun Always Shines on TV. The Sun Always Shines on TV. I'm going to have to look that one up. I haven't heard that. Yes, this is... I don't think many people... Most Americans don't know his name. A lot of Americans are familiar with the band AHA. I just didn't know what his name was. But yeah, I, I know what he looks like. Like, I recognize Morton Harkett. I recognize him. Okay. Um, Take On Me remains one of the most popular hit songs of the 1980s. Yeah. Named a knight first class of the Order of St. Olaf by King Harold. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah, he de he deserves to be on this. I feel like that's one of that's actually one of the most famous things like to come out of Norway was that band and that song. Honestly, I know of it. I know of it. Uh next we have Nut Hamsen was a Norwegian writer celebrated as one of the most influential and innovative literary stylists of the past 100 years. Nut Hamsen Nut Hamsen, a writer. Okay, what books did he write? He pioneered a psychological literature that influenced several writers. Ernst Hemingway, Franz Kafka. Oh my gosh. So he was very influential. Very, very influential. P pioneered his own style. That's pretty cool. Troubled childhood, being mistreated by his uncle. Ugh. Um, his... First novel was released in 1877, and he first received wide acclaim for his novel Hunger or Salt, 
The semi-autographical work described the, the writer's descent into near madness as a result of hunger and poverty. That's probably a fascinating book. Okay, I did not know about Nut Hampson. Very impressive. I'm glad there's a writer on here, too. His monumental work was the epic Growth of the Soil, which earned him a Nobel Prize in literature in 1920. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Then he had bad associations with the German war effort. Ooh. Um, okay, so some of his reputation got hurt by that. Huh, interesting. Okay, and next, Magnus Carlsen. This, oh wow, I keep saying this, but this, this might be the most famous Norwegian in the world today. It definitely is. It definitely is Magnus Carlsen. Especially since chess has gotten so popular recently. Very, very popular. Magnus is famous. Many, many Americans are big fans of Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, one, one of the best chess gra grandmasters of all time. Maybe the best. Current world chess champion, ranked number one. Yeah, absolutely savant at chess. I know Magnus Carlsen. Most people have heard of him in America for sure. He absolutely, he might be, he might be the most famous Norwegian ever, actually, just because of, like, the modern internet and media and stuff. Yeah, that's very good. Definitely worth being on the list. And Kaigo, um, that's a DJ, right? Yeah, Kaigo. I've heard of him. I'm not sure I know any of his work. I've heard of him. Kier Gorvel Dahl, Norwegian DJ songwriter, record producer. Yes, I think I think a lot of Americans do know of Kaigo. I just happen to like not be really listening to his music or anything. So I think he's pretty popular. Like, obviously he's popular because he's a world renowned DJ, but like not quite on the same level as Magnus Carlsen in terms of an American celebrity. But I've heard of him, which means he's pretty darn famous. So, uh, gained popularity creating remixes of I See Fire and Sexual Healing. Yep, yep, yep. He does a lot of remixes, doesn't he? Um, first single, Epsilon, followed by Steal the Show. Yeah, he's great. I'm sure I've heard his songs, and I just don't realize it, and they're probably awesome. So, yeah. Uh, 32 on the top 100 DJs. Yeah, Kaigo. I know Kaigo. Okay. And we have Niels Henrik Abel. I have not heard of Niels Niles. Niels Henrik Abel. While not known among the masses, many mathematicians will know who Abel was. So he did something amazing with math. Yeah, um, that's why I don't know him, because I am not a mathematician. Um... While he was 19, by the time he was 19, he was already the most knowledgeable mathematician in Norway. I don't know if I know any famous mathematicians, but now I do. Neil Henrik, Niels Henrik Abel. While in university, he started working on the quint, quintic equation in radicals. Uh, mathematicians had been looking for the solution to this for 250 years, and Abel was able to show the proof demonstrating the impossibility of solving it. So he kind of solved it by showing it was impossible to solve, basically. <laughs> um, and then he traveled to Europe and got tuberculosis and had to return home, and he died at 26. That's sad. Man, imagine what he could have accomplished if he had lived longer. He accomplished all of that. He was a... A genius, but already at 19 years old. Amazing. That's very cool. This is Niels Henrik Abel. Let's look him up. Okay, no real photograph. Cool. Mathematician. That's different. There's, I like that. Musicians, chess players, mathematicians, everything on this list. And Vidkong Quisling. Vidkon Abraham Jonsson Quisling was a Norwegian military officer and politician. Oh, I don't know any Norwegian politicians or military officers. 
He made a name for himself as a collaborator of the explorer Fridtjof Nansen and through organizing humanitarian relief during the Russian famine. Wow, amazing. That's amazing. Let's look him up. Vidkun Quisling. Okay. Um, okay, that's what he looks like. Vid Vidkun. I've never heard that name before either. After serving as a Norwegian diplomat to the Soviet Union, he served as Minister of Defense, representing the Farmers Party. Um, what else we have here? Mm. He, when Nazi Germany invaded and conquered Norway, he attempted to seize power in a radio broadcasted coup d'etat. Although the coup failed as the Germans refused to f support his government. Oh my gosh. He tried to take over. <laughs> he tried to seize power. Okay. Continuing to court with the Nazis, he was appointed prime minister for a pro-Nazi puppet group government. Hmm. And he was put on trial after World War II, found guilty, and sentenced to death. Wow. So he was initially famous for... He's famous for being a military officer and politician and had a big part in World War II, basically, in Norway. Okay. And he was found guilty of high treason and executed. Okay, so the, he is not a positive figure in history. Okay. Um, after his death, the term Quisling became a word for collaborator or traitor. Oh, like Benedict Arnold. His name is synonymous. Wow, Vic, Vidcon Quisling is a traitor. His name means traitor. Wow, okay. So he really is not a positive figure. Um, the term is still used today. Wow, okay, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Very interesting. Okay, was that it? Yes, I think so. Man, we had to finish off with that one, uh, which is kind of dark, but I'm glad to learn about it. Like, it's still interesting. It's a dark part of history, but it's still, like, good to learn about. Man, there was a lot of different people here. Mathematician, a trader, DJ, chess player, uh, writer, musician, explorer, footballer, playwright, pianist. Wow, this was a good list. This was good. These were very, inf for better or worse, all of these people were very influential. And I just haven't gotten a lot of Norwegian history in my life. So I really enjoyed this. This was like fantastic. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway, Norwegian culture, stuff in Norway I've never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thank you for watching and see you next time.